It pays to be ignorant. What is a mother-in-law sandwich? Cold shoulder and tongue. Pay the man eight dollars. It pays to be ignorant. What is a rumba? A rumba is a foxtrot with the back feel in motion. Pay the man nine dollars because it pays to be ignorant. <laughs> Star of our show, Mr. Tom Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stark, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here we are back again with that silly quiz program at Pays to Be Eager. So you better start twisting your dials around. There may be something better on another station. We have a board of experts who are so dumb they think Ivanhoe is a garden tool. First, we have to celebrate author, Mr. Harry McNaughton, who has just written a book entitled, My Mother-in-Law Went to Georgia, or That's What I Like About the South. But here he is, here he is, Mr. Harry McNaughton. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Howard. I have a poem. Yeah. Yes, she wears her stockings inside out all through the summer heat because it cools her off to turn the hose upon her feet. (laughs) Very, very refreshing. I imagine. Next, we have a woman who's old enough to know what it's all about, but too old to do anything about it. A woman woman who, when she's laying down, is ten inches taller than when she's standing up. Here she is, Miss Lulu McConnell. Well, Miss Howard, my old man went on another toot last night. Another toot? What is it now? Well, he walked into the lobby of a hotel and offered to fight anyone in the place. Did anyone take him up? Yeah, the elevator boy. The uh... <laughs> <laughs> Very corny, Miss McConnell. Next, we have a man who has been buying his newspapers from the same newsstand for years because he finds pennies on top of the papers. The only man, the only man I know who looks worse than his passport photo... Here he is, Mr. George Shelton. Well, Miss Howard, I made another investment today, and I hope I'll like make a lot of money out of it. Yeah? I bought $10,000 worth of airmail stamps. How do you expect to make money on airmail stamps? Why not? Airmail stamps are bound to go up. Are bound to go up. Remind me to hate you, Mr. Sheldon. Well, those are the experts, folks, so while you're deciding whether to remain with us or not, we'll get right into the first question. Yes. Uh, pay attention. This is rather an unusual question. Yes, yes. Here it is. Uh-huh. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. Still, it's the child of my father and mother. Now, who is it? <laughs> Mr. Howard, would you mind repeating the question? <laughs> I'll be glad to. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. Still, it's the child of my father and mother. Who is it? Anyone I know, Mr. Howard? Yes, it's someone you all know. Would it be a cousin, Mr. Howard? Certainly not. I have a second cousin. A second cousin? Wasn't the first one any good? Ah, please. Don't stop that. The question's about relatives. Oh, relatives. Oh, relatives. I have an uncle. I have an uncle. He's very eccentric. Yeah. Do you know that he thinks he's a chicken? Thinks he's a chicken? Why don't you send him away? We can't, George. No? We need the eggs. (laughs) Yes. Some yolk. Yeah. Will you stop? <laughs> Some yolk. Have you any brothers or sisters, Miss McConnell? No. Nope. You have no brothers or sisters? No. Nope. My parents were orphans. Your parents were orphans. <laughs> well, I, I have a brother in Alaska. Gnome. Certainly I know him. He's my brother, ain't he? <laughs> Know. Yeah, all right, please. Will you concentrate on the questions? I said before it's about relatives. You have a sister, haven't you, Mr. Mr. Shelton? Yes, I have. I saw her on the street today, but she didn't see me. I know she told me. She... <laughs> <laughs> well, I say, uh, Mr. Mr. Shelton, tell me, what uh, what does your sister do? Oh, she's a manicurist. A manicurist, mm-hmm. eh? Uh, how's she doing? Oh, fine. She makes money hand over fist. Yeah. <laughs> What a gag that is. All this has nothing to do with a question. Well, I met a girl on the street the other day, you know. Yes, I raised my hat. I said, hello, sister. <laughs> she said, hello. I said, where are you going, sister? She said, I'm going to the movies. I said, well, see you later, sister. <laughs> so long. Who was she? Good... My sister. Oh. <laughs> well, you're trying to answer the question. Listen again. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. Still, it's the child of my father and mother. Who is it? How do we know who it is? Why don't you tell us who it is? You're supposed to answer the question. Yeah, we're not supposed to know anything about your relatives. Certainly not. 
If your mother and father had a child that's not your sister or not your brother, that's their own business. Yes. <laughs> If I were you, Mr. Howard, I'd keep my mouth shut. I say. <laughs> of all the dumb idiots, to show you how dumb you are, I'm going to tell you the answer. Oh. Now, listen, it's not my sister, it's not my brother, still it's the child of my father and mother. Well, who is it? It's me. It's you? you. Exactly. It's you. All right. Oh, wait a minute now. This isn't my sister, this isn't my brother. Oh, I say, that's very clever. That's awfully clever, Mr. Howard. Thank you. Oh, it's pretty. It's very clever, I must say. What's clever about it? Don't you see, Mr. Shelton? It's not my sister. It's not my brother. And yet it's the child of my father and mother. Who is it? It's you. No, it's Mr. Howard. Ah. Oh. Well, try your off something, will you, Thomas? Please get me out of this mess. At this point, folks, we usually invite some member from our studio audience to take part in our program. Who have we first, Mr. Stark? Well, Mr. Howard, we have a gentleman, and here he is, Mr. Oscar Bloomquist. Oh, good evening, Mr. Bloomquist. It's nice to have you with us. How are you this evening? Thank you very well, sir. I'm glad to hear that. Where are you from, would you I'm like to tell Walter, us? I'm from Waltham, Massachusetts. From where? Waltham, Massachusetts. Oh, Waltham, Massachusetts. Waltham, Massachusetts. Waltham, Massachusetts. That's where they make the Well, watches. put soap in my mouth and call me Bubba. <laughs> Oh, you stupid boy from that town. You did. Yeah, I was a lumberjack in a butcher shop. You were, you were a lumberjack in a butcher shop? Yeah, I had charge of the... Shop. Shop. Oh. <laughs> I said... <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Sheldon, we can take time out for a moment while you reach down and pick up your teeth again. You had charge of the shop, sir. I want to warn you, Mr. Bloomquist, pay no attention to what you hear coming from the experts because they're not responsible. Have you ever been on a radio program before? Oh, no, sir. You've never been on a radio? No, sir. You're not nervous, are you? Well... Do I can hold my hand? Why are you Please, Miss <laughs> McConnell, why don't you act like a lady? I'd rather act natural. I see. <laughs> Tell me... Tell me, Mr. Uh, Bloomquist, what do you work at? What's your line of business? I'm a chiropodist. Uh, Carapas. That's right. That's the doctor. That's right. I see. Well, it's nice. Like to hold my foot. Oh, my God, play! Hold your foot. You know, it's a most foot. That's uh, an OPA project or something. Yeah. Hold your foot. Most extraordinary thing, you know, doctor. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my uncle went to the doctor last week, you know. He did. Yes, he uh, he had water on the knee, you know. Water on the knee. Yeah, the doctor told me he had water on the knee. Uh-huh. He was so disappointed. He was. He thought it was champagne. He. <laughs> You know, I got a brother-in-law that's got water on the knee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a traffic cop down on Canal Street. Yeah, I see. Did, uh, did he go down to see the doctor, George? Yeah, the doctor told him to wear pumps. Wear pumps. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Shelton, that is positively ridiculous. Uh, I-, I wish you'd stop with those puns. You're annoying our guest here. Tell me, uh, doctor, have you ever heard this program before? Oh, lots of times. You have? That's right, sir. Thank you. Up in Waltham, is That's that right? That's right. Are you married? Oh, you bet. Oh, you you want to take my temperature? Take your temperature, please. <laughs> Will you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? The doctor told him to wear slippers. Slippers. <laughs> Is your wife... If you keep laughing, Doctor, we'll have to charge you admission here. <laughs> is your wife... Is your wife with you, Doctor, this evening? No, sir, she's not. Oh, no wonder you're... <laughs> uh, tell me. Would you mind telling me how... Just how do you happen to be in New York this evening? I just came down to see the show. Especially to see the show? That's right, sir. My goodness, I want to tell you it wasn't worth the expense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It sure is nice. It sure is nice to have you with us. It can... sure is. What's your first name, honey? Well, my friends call me Baldy. You can call me Baldy. Oh, that's fair enough. Baldy. He's a cute kid, isn't he? <laughs> well, Curly, I, you, you are... <laughs> Tugboat. I got a lot of pull. You sound like a lot of pull. 
But your anchor is dragging them. <laughs> And would you read the question, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Dr. Blumquist, please. Just take your time and read it right into our microphone. Who invented the singer sewing machine? Thank you. <laughs> Who invented the singer sewing machine? Don't say anything about sewing machines to me. No? No, there were some men moving a sewing machine out of a four-story window uh -huh. today. And as I passed, the machine let go and hit me right on top of the head. Yeah. I thought it had split my skull open. Ah, uh, too bad. <laughs> Yeah. Let me see. Right there, Lola. Right Where? there. Right there. See it? Oh, I don't see nothing. Well, you can't see the machine, but the stitches are there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you had another brain, you'd have one. Who invented the singer sewing machine? The question's about invention. Oh, invention. Right. I say, Mr. Howard, speaking about inventions, tell me something. What is a rank? A rank? Yes. Uh, uh, I never heard of a rank. No, Mr. Edison invented it. Mr. Edison invented the rank? Uh, I read in the paper the other day where Mr. Edison was an inventor of the first rank. Inventor of the first rank. So I, uh, I called up and... All right. Mr. McNaughton, without a doubt, you're the biggest jackass I've ever seen. Wait a minute. Don't forget I'm here, Mr. All right. <laughs> Yeah, what is it, Lou? It's a square bathtub. Oh, a square bathtub? Yeah. What's the advantage of a square bathtub? You can't get any rings around the tub. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a good idea I'm working on now. You yeah. have a good idea? Yeah. Well, what is it, George? Putting shoe polish up in toothpaste tubes. Shoe polish in toothpaste tubes? Yeah. Oh, I said that wouldn't fool me. What? I can tell the difference the minute I put it in my mouth. <laughs> Mr. McNaughton, why don't you take another vacation? Go up to the Thousand Islands and spend a week on each one, will you? Yes. <laughs> Who invented the singer soul machine? Have you got a soul machine, Miss McConnell? Sure. Is it a singer? Well, it hums a little. It hums. <laughs> Well, I think the greatest invention is the donut. The donut. And boy, do I love donuts. Oh, I really, Mr. Shelton? Uh. Well, tell me something. Are you a dunker? No, I'm a non-dunker. Not that I'm the least bit interested, but just what is a non-dunker? Well, a dunker dunks his donuts in the coffee. Yeah. Well, I take the donuts out of the coffee and wipe them off. I see. <laughs> why, do you dunk, why do you dunk them in the coffee and wipe them off? I don't like wet donuts. You don't like <laughs> Well, then why do you dump them in the coffee in the first place? So I can wipe them off. Now, wait a minute. If you didn't dump them in the coffee, you wouldn't get them wet. Well, if I didn't get them wet, what's the sense of wiping them off? Ah. <laughs> Mr. Sheldon, you're an idiot of the first water. You're quite a drip yourself. Uh, all right. You dumb clock, you. Thank you. Let's get back to the question. Who invented the singer's soul machine? Say, speaking of inventions, Mr. Hart, did I tell you I'm working on a new invention? It's a phonograph for it's babysitters. A phonograph for babysitters? Father, it's an automatic changer. Yeah, all right. <laughs> My mother told me they'd be nice like this. You know, my Uncle Wentworth is always trying something new up at the farm. Yeah. I remember one time he crossed onions with garlic. What'd he get? Lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> A woman inventor? Yes. Oh, I'm sure glad they invented women. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm warning you, my patience is getting thin. And so is your hair. All right. I think the greatest invention of the age, you know, is the safety pin. I think electricity is the greatest invention. I still say the safety pin. I say electricity. Why do you keep saying the safety pin? Mr. Shelton, if you're at a dance with a young lady and your suspenders break, what good is electricity? <laughs> That does it, Mr. Stark. Will you step in here and give our good friend twenty-four dollars and ten cents for his visit here? And thank you a lot, Doctor, for being with us. Here you are, Mr. Blomquist, and good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Blomquist. And now, folks, it's time for those four young men with four good voices. Let's listen as they sing a special arrangement of Old MacDonald. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O And on this farm he had some chicks, E-I-E-I-O 
chick chick here. And a chick chick there. Here chick, there chick, everywhere. Chick chick. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on this farm he had some ducks. E-I-E-I-O. With a quack quack here. And a quack quack there. Here quack 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 everywhere. Quack quack. Chick chick here. And a chick chick there. Here chick there chick everywhere. Chick chick. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. I'd like to welcome a delegation of police from Troy, New York. They're here for the police convention of the PBA. Welcome to it, place to be ignorant, folks. I hope you have a nice time. And now, Mr. Stark, how about another guest? Well, Mr. Hard, we have a very charming young lady, and here she is, Mrs. Irma Williams. Oh, good evening, Miss Williams. It's very nice to have you come to our mic. How are you this evening? Fine, thank you. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Where are you from, would you like to tell us? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, we don't Chattanooga. Yeah. And how were things in Chattanooga when you left? Oh, just fine. They're good. Do you still live there? Yes. Oh, good. How do you happen to be in New York at this time? Just vacationing. Just vacationing. Well, you couldn't have come to a better place. Have you ever been to New York before? No, I haven't. First time. First time. How do you like our little town here? Okay. Good. I'm glad you do. Are you through, Mr. Howard? Are you through, old boy? Am I through? Yes, mister. What do you mean, am I through? I would like to ask the young lady from Chattanooga some questions. Oh, I see. There's... So would I. Yes. We're just sitting here like a couple of dope. Yes. <laughs> and very, be- very becoming to the both of you. Uh, Does that mean me too, Mr. Howard? That means you too. <laughs> That's what I like. A short, direct answer. I see. <laughs> I'm sorry for these interruptions, uh, Miss Williams. I must apologize for the panel here. Tell me, are you married? Yes, I am. Uh-huh. Is your... That's a funny thing. I said to my girl last night, I said, let you and I get married. Yes. What'd she say? She said, okay, but who'd have us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, you know, you know, speaking about marriage, you know, <laughs> yesterday was my wife's birthday. Yeah. So I bought her a brand new garbage can. New garbage can? <laughs> what was the matter with the old one? It was full. It was full? <laughs> no idea. That's a swell idea. All right. Hey. <laughs> now tell me, uh, how long have you been married, Miss Williams? Four years. Four years. That's Got right. any boyfriends? Uh, please. You <laughs> said you was married. Well, what difference does that make? Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Connell, do you mean to say you have boyfriends? I ain't talking. I see. <laughs> uh, tell me, have you any family, Miss Williams? One little boy, seven months old. Isn't he? Uh, he's here with you, too. No. He's not here with you. Uh, you left him home. Mother has him. Oh, mother has him. That's where mothers come in handy, isn't That's it? That's right. He certainly is. <laughs> well, it's certainly nice to have you with us. Uh, tell me, uh, then you do any... Uh, that is, do you do anything else but housework? Do you have a business on the side? Or... No, I don't. Well, I guess housework keeps you pretty busy. That's right. Uh-huh. Your husband, you say, is with you, huh? Yes. Good. Well, I hope you're both... Have you seen any shows? Yes. You have seen some shows. What show have you seen? Oh, we went to Winner Take All. Oh, Winner Take mm-hmm. All. That's very nice. Who, with uh, uh, Mr. Collier? Is that no, I don't remember show? now. I think it is. Would you, it like is. A, would you like a cup of tea and a muffin? Ah, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you came and paid us this visit. It certainly is nice to have you uh, with us. Have you ever saw a broadcast before? No. This is the first one that is winner take all in this one. You've That's never right. been on one. No, sir. You're not nervous? 
Oh, a little. Oh, well, don't be nervous. We're all one big family here. We don't get along so well, but we are one big family. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. But before you go, we would love to have you reach into the hat there that Mr. Stark is holding. You can see it, that dunce cap. And pick out a question for us, please. And would you read the question if you don't mind? In what key was Rubenstein's melody in F written? Right? <laughs> very, very nicely read. These questions are getting very difficult. Yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. I imagine we're going to have trouble with this one. Let me repeat it for you. In what key was Rubenstein's melody in F written? Mr. Howe, tell me something, confidentially. Who wrote it? <laughs> Mr. McMahon. Why don't you send your brain back to the moron it belongs to? I've lost your address, old boy. All right. <laughs> it's worse and worse. If you listen to the question, you'd readily know who wrote it. I'll repeat it once more. Yes, please. And what key is Rubenstein's melody in that written? How many shots and uh, shops and flats was it written in? Did you say shots or shots? Shots. <laughs> How many sharps and flats? Yes, sir, Sheldon, I'm not interested in sharps and flats. I just want the key. Well, what good is the key if you haven't got the flat? I... <laughs> Howard, it's logical to presume that this question is a musical question. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Sheldon or Mr. McNaughton, you surprise me. You're right. It is a musical question. Isn't that odd? Isn't it odd? Oh, it's yes. amazing. Okay. I was reading a book about musicians the other day, and in the book it said that Orpheus was such a great musician that when he played, he made trees and mountains move. So what? When I played the trombone, the whole neighborhood moved. <laughs> I can, I can very readily believe that. Very My old readily. man's a musician. Your what? My old man's a musician. Your old man. Yes, what does he do? Fiddle what? with his whiskers? What? Oh, go ahead. Never mind. <laughs> you, already, you already spoiled it, so go ahead. Now, what were you saying? What is he doing? I said my old man is a musician. Good. He plays a diatophone. Uh, what? What? What in the world is a diatophone? Oh, it's an odd-shaped instrument and has a hole in each end. And you have to blow in both ends at the same time. How can you blow in both ends at the same time? Do you have to do it? No. Then what are you worrying about? All right. Let's get on here. What was the question, Mr. Howe? In what key was Rubenstein's melody in that written? Now, let me figure that out the way you used to figure it out in school. Okay. Now, you take four apples. Uh, then wait you a minute. What has apples got to do with the question? Why, what's the matter? Don't you like apples? I didn't say that. I'm just not interested in apples. Tell me, Mr. Howard, why don't you like apples? No. That's a pretty nasty attitude, Mr. Uh, Howard. Play. Precisely. Suppose no one liked apples. Yeah, then nobody would buy them. Then the farmers wouldn't grow anymore. Exactly. And if the farmers stopped growing, we'd have nothing but a lot of midget farmers. That's right. <laughs> 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 if we didn't have any apples, where would the little worms go? Would <laughs> <laughs> you deprive a poor worm of a home? You just keep paying your rent and you'll always have a home. <laughs> All I want to know is in what key was Rubenstein's melody in F written? You mean F like in potatoes? There's no F in potatoes. No, how about French fries? French fries. <laughs> you please cut it out. First apples, now potatoes. Lovely meal we're having. Yes. Pass the gravy, will you? Please, the question's about music. I say, oh, speaking about music, I read an ad in the paper the other day. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was a musical ad. It said a young man with an upright piano would like to meet a young lady with, with a spinet. Object, baby grand. <laughs> Five bucks, forty. All right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, that's cute, Mr. Howard. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Howard, did you know that I have a boyfriend who plays a violin? Yeah, what was his name? Ne Nero. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what's on there. The question's about music. Do you know anything about music, Mr. Sheldon? Certainly. You know what? Why didn't you say so? Well, you didn't ask me. Oh, never mind. I was a born musician. You were a born musician. Never mind. I'll tell you what we'll do, Mr. Stark. Step in here and give our charming guest $25.90 for helping us out. And thank you, Miss Williams. It was a pleasure. Well, here you are, Miss Williams, and lots of luck to you. <laughs> 